Hello everyone. Today I am going to be going through this crochet book, which is uh, La Banda de Pica Pau Dos, Veinte uh, Nuevos Amigurumas de Jan Schneckel. In order to decide on which pattern I'm going to make, which as you probably couldn't tell from the title or, well, I think this is just a word that was created, but from the rest of the title, this book is in Spanish. So I'm going to be going through the book and deciding which project I'm going to make. Now these are all stuffed animals, so in a way, this is basically kind of like the yarn version of The Bachelor. Huh, so many options, which one do I choose? So we're going to start with the indice, which is um, table of contents. So there's the introduction. Uh, materiales y herramientas. So that's basically the materials and tools. La atención en las prendas y accesorios hacer un muestra. Okay, I think that's gauge. The introducción al crochet. And then los puntos. Leer un patrón, that's how to read a pattern. And then the place where we're probably going to be spending most of the time, Patronus. So, I don't think I necessarily need to go through um, a lot of the materials again, because uh, even though this is supposed to be standalone from the knitting uh, book, um, I did go through a lot of these with the knitting book. So, I think I'm going to be focusing mostly on, like... Um, how to read a pattern, and then choosing which stuffed animal I'm going to make, because honestly, that's cuter. And if I need to go back and, like, use this to decipher the pattern later on, I can, because it's a book. It's not going to, like, I'm not going to lose anything due to buffering, you know? So I think I'm just going to skip to page 40, Lier un Patron, which is reading a pattern and seeing. Right here. There we go. Lier un Patron. El crochet habla su propio lengua, oh no, lenguaje, ah, y como todo lengua, tiene sus particularidades. La terminología del crochet no solo cambia según el idioma, el idioma sino que dentro de un mismo idioma puede haber dialectos. La tabla que viene a continuación es una brevísima guía de los puntos y símbolos más usados. En este libro usar la terminología que se usa en América Latina, específicamente en Argentina. Okay, so what this is basically saying right here is uh, crochet is pretty much its own language. It has its own terms. And uh, the terms used in crochet aren't only different between languages, but there are dialects in the same language. So uh, she has a guide for the different dialects here and uh, for the most common um, ones. And uh, the ones that she's going to be using in this book is terminology that's used in Latin America, specifically in Argentina. Which is good. Um, it's good that she mentions this here. Because, like, when I was learning Spanish, like, uh, one thing that the Spanish books often had to make a distinction about was this was Spanish that's used in Latin America versus this is Spanish that's used solely in Spain. And, like, the main difference between the two was that um, there was a tense that uh, they use in Spain that they don't really use that much in Latin America. It's the Fosotros tense, um, where it's basically uh, you all, but it's formal. While basically in Latin America, they use what Spain considers the informal you all for everybody, formal or informal, which honestly makes more sense. Why make things more difficult? <laughs> so, um, the first column here is for Latin America. The second column here is for Spain. For Spain. 
And then the third column is EEUU, which I know is the abbreviation for Estados Unidos, aka the United States. And then um, they have Reino Unido, which I'm guessing is United Kingdom. And then it says Simbolo. So I guess that's if it's in a graph. But anyway, this takes out a lot of the guesswork for what these phrases are going to mean in the future. So uh, thank you, Jan Schneckel. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Okay. And then it says, uh, parentheses y corchetes. En este libro uso los parentheses para indicar las extracciones que deben repetirse a lo largo de una vuelta o hilera una terminada cantidad de veces. So in this book, uh, she uses parentheses to indicate the instructions that need to be repeated uh, either one time or multiple times. El numeral ent entre corchetes al final de cada línea muestra es el número total de puntos que deberán tener al final de la era. Oh, okay. So here, she's going to say, like, repeat three times this section in parentheses, and then the part, I guess, corchetes is brackets. So it's basically, um, when, uh, you repeat that part three times, like 18 is like the final stitch count for how many stitches you do this over. So, tres ve indica la foto que le en que nos encontramos en este caro la tercera. Las extracciones dentro del paréntesis son los puntos que deben repetir seis veces a lo largo de la vuelta. Dieciocho es el número total de puntos que deben tener al finalizar la vuelta. Yes, I was right. So, uh, the number inside the brackets is the number of stitches that I'm going to need to have at the end of this. While the stuff in the parentheses is what you're going to repeat. And outside the parentheses is the amount of times that I'm going to repeat it. That's good to know. <laughs> that is very, very good to know. Cuando las instrucciones se repiten a lo largo de varias vueltas o hileras, Liran, 10V, 20V, lo que indica que se deben seguir las mismas instrucciones desde la vuelta o hilera 10 a la 20, incluida. Uh, so it's saying, like, when it's under a really long um, set of the instructions, it'll tell you, like, which, oh, tell you which rows you're going to do it from, including the row that um, she last mentions. All right. So now to the fun part. Look at all these animals we're going to meet. Oh my gosh, so cute. So I think what's going to have me decide which stuff animal I'm going to make is kind of like, I'm looking for something not too easy, but not too hard. And also, I know they have like little stories depending on um, like uh, to kind of introduce like the flavor text. So yeah, the flavor text is absolutely going to determine uh, which one I choose. <laughs> and also if I like the general look, you know. So, we start off with Logan Koala. So, clearly a koala. <laughs> so, Al Carice, no. Al Criarse en la playa junto a sus hermanas, una iguana y dos ulababes, y sus hermanos, un wombat y tres orin. Nitorixincos. Logan siempre tuvo que trabajar un poco más para 
obtender lo que quería y lo que más quería en el mundo era subir las olas como sus hermanas y sus y hermanos mayores. All right, so he plays on the beach with his sisters, which I'm not sure what uh, equina is, but I'm guessing the wallabies is a uh, wallaby. <laughs> um, and his brothers, a uh, wombat, and I'm not sure what an orinito recall is. He always had to work a little bit more in order to get what he wants. And what he wants most in the world is... I'm going to guess it's to surf the waves with his older brothers and sisters. So uh, Logan's the youngest here. Pearl, con solo dos tablas de surf para compartir entre toda la familia, Logan también aprendió a ser paciente. A darse tiempo para observar y disfrutar el, marvio, y, el maravilloso mundo que lo rodeaba. rodeaba. Y, sabe a, y sabe lo afortunado que es el ser tan amado por su familia de tener siempre a alguien que... Lo abrace cuando tiene miedo o se siente un poco triste. So Logan has also learned to be patient and to give time to uh, to observe and enjoy the world that, I don't know what that verb is, but he's also knows how he's fortunate to have a lot of love from his family because he always has someone to give him a hug when he feels sad or he has scared or he's scared, which, aww. <laughs> Pequeño en tamaño, pero ya casi un adulto, Logan está terminando sus estudios en ingeniería ambiental. La mejor forma que encontró devolver todo el amor que recibió y uh, small in size, but almost an adult, Logan uh, is finishing studies in some type of engineering. The major, the most part which he's going to return to give back all the love which the people in his home have given him. So that that's Logan. That's kind of cute. Okay. So I'm looking at the pattern here. It, it looks like part of it is sewn. It looks like it'd also be relatively simple, and I don't know what's going on with those ears. It looks almost like a pom pom's glued in there, honestly. Hmm. Gonna. I call that. That is a pom pom glued in there. Okay. So the next one is Darwin Tortuga. Oh, this is a tortoise. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at that. So Darwin nació hace 60 años en las hermosas y bellas islas Galápagos. Toda su familia ha vivido durante muchísimo tiempo en las islas y Darwin está orgulloso que decir que, de hecho, su tío era amigo personal de Charles Darwin y estuvo a bordo del HMS Beagle durante un tiempo. So, uh, Darwin 60. <laughs> uh, he was born 60 years ago in uh, the famous and beautiful Galapagos Islands. All of his family has lived much has lived a lot of time in the islands and Darwin is very proud to say uh, that 
his uncle was a personal friend of Charles Darwin and was part of the HMS Beagle for a time. Cuando se entró del origen su nombre, Darwin decidió hacerle una y estudia historia natural para a su ritmo. So kind of like the origin of his name, uh, Darwin has decided to honor it and study natural history. And I'm not sure what that last part of the sentence is. So mientras tanto, disfruta de su trabajo como guía en las islas, enseñando lo que aprende sus cursos, tomando nota de absolutamente todo lo que descubre en el camino, y por supuesto, Cantano una y mil veces la historia de aquella vez que su tío conoció al mismo Charles Darwin. Meanwhile, he's enjoying his job as a tour guide of the islands, uh, which he's learning about through his courses. He's taking, it looks like he's taking note of everything he sees on this walk. And uh, he's also telling the story a thousand and one times about the, about how his uncle knew Charles Darwin. <laughs> it's a bit of a name dropper, Darwin. <laughs> um, but also like super cute. I, I mean, I do have a soft spot for turtles. It's also like a cute little booties. Oh, and look at that shell. You can't really go into that shell, but. Mm. Okay, so. Sasuke Gata? How would a Spanish person pronounce Sasuke? It's. S-A-T-S-U-K-I. Usually when you see like a word with a K in it in Spanish, it's transplanted from somewhere else because uh, K is not a native letter in Spanish. I, I think it is part of the Spanish alphabet. I, I don't really remember the Spanish alphabet. I know the Spanish alphabet has... Some letters that are not in English, so when they appear in English, they're transplanted, like the enye, which is the N with the tilde on it. And there's also letters that in English we just split to one letter, like the L, which is the double L, and uh, the R, right, the R, I think, R, I have trouble rolling my R's, but it's like the double R. Um... And also, apparently, C-H was a letter, too. But I think they kind of dropped that one over the years. Anyway, when I see the letter K in Spanish, I know it's just like those letters in English. It's a transplant and, like, um, it, it's from a different language. Which, I mean, none of these have had, like, Particularly Spanish sounding names. Logan, not a Spanish name. Darwin, also not a Spanish name. Uh, but Gata, we know this is a cat. <laughs> Cuando Sasuke era una pequeña gatita, recibió su primer cuaderno y una caja de lápices de 48 colores. Estaba tan marvelida que no se aminó a tocar sus regalos durante días. Cuando los uso por primera vez, cuido de no estropear ni una sola hoja ni de gastar demasiado la punta de ningún lápiz. Okay, so when she was like a really, when she was like a little small kitten, uh, she received her first notebook and 
a case of uh, a 48 colored pencils. And she was so in all of these colored pencils and books that she couldn't talk, touch them for days. And when she used them for the first time, she was, uh, she was really, really careful with everything. Like she didn't break the point of her pencils. So, a Sasuke le gustaba escribir y dibujar, pero amaba al más mirar su hermoso cuaderno forrado en líneo azul y su deslumbrante estuque de lápices rojo. So while she likes to draw and write, she also loves to spend time admiring the material, just admiring the materials that she has, which I get that, honestly. I really get that. Con los años reunió una colección de papelería tan grande que terminó por ocupar toda su apetación. So she has a collection of stationery that takes up her whole home, or her whole bedroom. Y cuando vio que no le quedaba más espacio en toda la casa, se aminó a dar un gran salto. Hoy es la orgullosa y feliz dueña de una pequeña y bonita paper yeah, el espacio donde puede transmitir su pasión y cualquiera que decidía cruzar su puerto rojo y sus cortinas de lino azul. So now she owns a little stationery shop where she's very happy to share her passion about uh, the different materials, which... Okay. I mean, there are some parts here that I feel like if I were to do her, I would probably end up dropping off something. <laughs> uh, the bow feels a bit intrusive here. It's cute, but it feels a bit intrusive, like a little bit too big. But the tail is kind of cute. And also like the little dress. Oh my gosh, the overall dress. And here we have our first Spanish sounding name, Mario, oh, is that more Italian? <laughs> I don't know. Mario Mapache. He looks like a raccoon or a, uh, which in the uh, United States could also be known as a trash panda. In other parts, my, fam my uh, family doesn't really live in an area where we call them trash pandas, but it makes sense. <laughs> so, uh. Mario es chofer de autobús y adora su trabajo. He's a bus driver and loves his job. <laughs> Cinco días a la semana conduce su vehículo a través del valle conectando dos pequeños pueblos y pasando por un una demuna al día junto al río. So five days a week, he drives his vehicles um, like through a valley connecting two small towns and passes it alongside a river. Okay, that that's a uh, very picturesque route. A Mario le encanta observar el paso de las estaciones a lo largo del año. Tiene corazón de poeta. Pero de lo que más disfruta en las conversaciones con los pasajeros. Le encanta hablar sobre el clima o sobre la próxima cerca y obviamente compartir algún que otro chisme. Oh, so it says he's got the heart of a poet. <laughs> um... He loves watching the different um, 
he, he loves watching how the path changes throughout the year but he loves talking to the people who go on and off the bus more he loves sharing stories about the weather and every so often he exchanges a joke uh, Mario's a little extrovert here <laughs> uh. Después de leer una columna sobre la vida de autores famosos, a Mario se le ocurrió la genial idea de escribir las historias de todas las personas que habla levado en su autobús a lo largo de los años. Oh, not bad. Uh, after reading a column about famous authors, uh, he decided he was going to write a story about all the people he sees on the bus. Ahora aprovecha a su descanso de las horas para escribir ideas. Ya tiene suficiente material como para escribir una saga de tres volúmenes, pero dice que todavía necesita un poco más. Aunque todos sabemos que probablemente sea una excusa para seguir huismeando. So basically, he has enough material for three books already, but he keeps saying he needs a little bit more, which we know is an excuse to put it off. I'm guessing, or to be lazy. Um, I kind of regret calling you a trash panda. <laughs> um, the vest is adorable. Like that, that's Mario. I could see that being like a sufficient challenge. Okay. Six is Agatha Beha. Ooh, this is a bumblebee. <laughs> Agatha Abeja tiene una familia muy numerosa. Los ama a todos y cada uno. De ellos, he está muy orgullosa del trabajo que realizan en su greja de miel. So, uh, Agatha Beha has a very numerous fam, has a lot of people in the family. She loves them all, and every one of them. And she's very proud of their work to make honey, I think. Sin embargo, desde que era una apita muy chiquitita, supo que el negocio de la miel no, par, no era para ella. However, uh, she knows that the honey business is not for her. <laughs> okay. Quería viajar, pero no podía ir demasiado lejos. Sus alas no son lo suficientemente grandes y como nació en un campo de margaritas en Nueva Zelanda, tendría que cruzar océanos para llegar, y llegar a cualquier otro lugar. So she wants to travel, but she knows her little wings can't take her too far. And uh, she was born in a camp of, I feel like margaritas is a false cognate here because I think of the tequila drink and I know that is not what they're talking about, <laughs> but it's in New Zealand. So uh, she knows she probably has to cruise an ocean to get to where she wants. <laughs> Y eso de seguro le provocaría Mario, Marielos. Don't know what any of that means, but she's sure, it's like she's sure of something. Afortunadamente, en su primer viaje a la costa conoció a un grupo de extraordinarios tatuadores y entonces encontró que lo, lo que quiere hacer El resto de su vida. Uh, fortunately, during her first trip, she met, like her first trip to the coast, she met a group of extraordinary, don't know what tatuadores is, I think it's tourists. 
And now she knows what she wants to do with the rest of her life, which good for her. Um, hoy trabaja como paciente y aprende el oficio. Ya tiene tatuajes en casi todo el cuerpo. Oh! Eso sí, por favor, no le cuenten nada a sus padres, aunque seguro que a su abuelo le encantaría en sus nuevos tatuajes. It's not Taurus. <laughs> she met a bunch of tattooed people. So now she has tattoos on every part of her body, <laughs> which makes her infinitely more badass. <laughs> It's like, don't tell our parents, but her abuela loves tattoos, which explains the designs here. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> basically, she, so she decided that honey was not for her. So she decided to go travel. So she went on a cruise and on her first trip to the coast, she met a bunch of people who got tattooed, so she's like, I want to get tattooed now. She's good for Agatha. <laughs> ah, I mean, that would be a challenge. I haven't really done anything like that. But that would also be really adorable. Um, and I haven't even done anything like that in English. <laughs> I guess... I mean, usually when I crochet, um, I'll just do the spiral thing, even if the pattern tells me to then chain one and then add on that way. Um, because I just find it easier. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter. But for a pattern like this, it absolutely would. Um. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, my nose is like running. I know it's like disgusting to see me just like wipe my nose like that. I'm so sorry. Uh. Okay. So, uh, I get this a contender now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next is a uh, Newton Lechuza. This is an owl. <laughs> I also have a soft spot for owls simply because, um, my school, the college I ended up graduating from, the mascot was an owl. And, like, I kind of live in the same city that my, uh, I, from the college I ended up graduating from. So I've been seeing that owl my entire life. Anyway, uh, Newton es cartógrafo y conoció a su mejor amigo, Darwin Tortuga, cuando estaba... Mapeando un grupo de nueva islas en el Oceano Pacifico. Oh, so uh, he's a cartographer. He draws maps. And he met his best friend, the tortoise we talked about before, Darwin Tortuga, when he was scrapping a group of new islands in the Pacific Ocean. Aunque no se ven demasiado, se escriben cartas larguísimas. Detailando cada acontecimiento y pequeña cosa que aprendieron mientras no estaban juntos. Even though they don't see each other a lot, they write long letters explaining every little detail about things that they learn when they're not together. Darwin Tortuga puede escribir folios y folios sobre la cantidad de puntos que vio en una mariquita y a Newton puede no interesarle este tema, pero disfruta tanto la pasión de su amigo por la naturaleza que nunca se queja ni se queer, ni se queer cuando le escribir por encima de sobre cuál vez que Su tío conocía el, el mismo Charles Darwin. Um, so he, Newton is not as interested in Darwin in the natural world, but he doesn't complain because he appreciates the passion his friend has for him. And he refrains to mention it when his friend mentions again, hey, guess who my uncle knows? Charles Darwin! <laughs> Which is like, 
Darwin, shut up! A veces estas descripciones super detalladas le resultan muy útiles por a Newton le encanta inventar mapas para mundos imaginarios. Lo crean o no, Newton es la mente maestra. Maestra. Newton is female. <laughs> I did not realize that. Um, de hechos de los mapas. De muchos huecos de mesa, novelas, cuentos y películas que todos conocemos. I mean, that makes more sense of why she would refrain from mentioning that. Like, I saw Newton and automatically thought male. But, um, because Isaac Newton... But they, so basically, uh, sometimes she likes to invent maps from her imagination, but whether they're real or not, um, she's the best person to teach how to draw maps and understand maps and other things that we know, which, I mean, so cute, so cute. Again, that would be a challenge, but I think it'd be worth. I think it'd be worth it. Then again, too much of Newton's description was about her friend uh, Darwin Tortuga, and Darwin Tortuga's thing did not mention her at all, which is again another woman whose identity is wrapped up in a man. Uh, oh. There's a whole little separate section for her here, it looks like. Ooh. Okay. Huh. Okay. So this next one is named Otis Perry Soso. And it's a sloth. So, I Perry Soso is a Spanish word for lazy. <laughs> so this is basically lazy Otis. And I don't know whether lazy and sloth are the same word in Spanish or not. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if it was. <laughs> or if um or if the author here just took liberties and went like, oh, we're going to call most of them the names of the animals. But this one we're just going to call Lazy Otis. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Otis tuvo bastante... Uh, no. Otis tuvo bastantes dificultades para saber que quiere hacer con su vida. So Otis has had huge difficulties in knowing what he wants to do with his life. Same. <laughs> es un tipo paciente que se toma su tiempo para decidir si los estereotipos a veces conciertos pero tan lento que se ha aburrido de no hacer casi nada. He has a hard time, he's a patient type, he has a hard time deciding what to do. I'm not sure if this is saying if he know, like, he gets bored not doing anything or he doesn't get bored not doing anything. Ah, okay. So, primero, entendo said. DJ Pero a Otis no le gusta la música moderna o muy alta. So first he wanted to be a DJ, but he doesn't like modern or loud music. Después probó trabajar en un restaurante, pero lava, lamentablemente sus clientes tenían la curiosa manía de querer que su comida estuviera caliente cuando le gara a la mesa.
So then he tried to work at a restaurant, but unfortunately, the clients had a manic curiosity about the food that he brings to the table. I don't really understand that one. Entonces, Otis decidió esperar hasta que presente la siguiente oportunidad. El tres no se bueno para sus cutis y afina en que apareció un nuevo trabajo casi de inmediato. Su amiga Lupita Mono Araña le contó a Otis que necesita a alguien que de la Jara el Observatorio Espacial durante las noches. Y así de sentirlo y sin apuro, Otis consiguió el trabajo de sus sueños, mirar los celos nocturnos mientras descansa con modo en sus ramas favoritas. So he decided to wait for the next opportunity to come along, and one came almost immediately, which is like, you know what, I'm going to stop looking, I'm going to find it for myself. And then, uh, his friend's like, hey, I got this job at this observatory that works during the nights and you can run it. And he's like, cool. So now he just spends his night staring at the ceiling. I mean, he wears the most adorable beanie. And it does look better than some of the sloth patterns that I've made in the past. But we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back because my nose is driving me mad. <laughs> okay, I'm back. And, uh... The next one is Henrietta Zebra. So we got ourselves a little zebra here. Ah. So Henrietta nació lejos de la ciudad que nunca duerme pero de todos modos y casi sin buscarlo se encontró estudiando y trabajando en galerías de arte en la Gran Nueva York. So, basically, she was born from a city, but she wants to go to New York to study art. To study and work in art galleries in New, in New York. So, Henrietta es feliz caminando con sus tacones altos por sus Policiosos y algo olorosas cales. <laughs> okay. Es feliz para observar que personas tan distintas de todo el mundo convienen en una misma celularidad. Oh. <laughs> uh, so Henriette is very happy to walk the busy and sometimes smelly streets just to look at all the people who live there. And uh, she's happy to see that people of all types of the world can live in the same city. <laughs> but it's like calling him smelly. It's like she's not. I, I, I lived there for like. Um, like three semesters of college. She's not wrong. Some. Times the streets are busy and smelly. <laughs> Sin embargo, también echa de menos su hogar, los sabrosos platos que comía en su casa de la infancia. Hace unos meses, lama, lamó a su abuelo para pedirle todas sus re recetas. Como su abuelo juró que nunca pondría una pie de una ciudad tan grande, tan grande, Henriette se prometió convertirse en la mejor conocida de Hambalaya y Gombo de Nueva York. Quien sabe, quise terminar abriendo un pequeño restaurante donde todas estas personas pueden reunirse y hablar de arte hasta el amenazar. Okay, so here it's like she has stuff from home. 
despite being far from home, she has stuff that reminds her of home and she calls her grandmother uh, to tell her everything that she says. Her grandmother had never set foot in such a big city. I don't understand why the fact that her grandmother never set foot in a city led her to open up a uh, jambalaya and gumbo restaurant in New York. But she's open. She's now a restaurant owner where people can come in and talk about art. Which, not the path I would have taken, but good for her. I mean, you can see, this looks like an outfit an art student would wear. <laughs> um, although, I mean, with the zebra, you put in that much effort to put in stripes and then you cover it up with a jumpsuit? That part doesn't make that much sense, but okay. All right. Um, I mean... Although, although I get it, like I also visited a lot of museums when I was in New York. Sometimes I would go on what I called like the museum three day, like the three day museum blitz where over three days I would visit three different museums. So it was a great way to explore the city and make sure I took advantage of that during my time off. Ooh. Luisa Elefanta. This is an elephant. Ser un elefante no es fácil. Resulta casi imposible entrar de una habitación sin ser visto y hay que ser muy cuidadoso para no tropezarse o pisotear las cosas. So being an elephant isn't easy. It's very impossible to enter a space without being seen. And they have to be careful. I'm not sure what these things are, but it's like um, not to break things. Also, I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got a neighbor who likes to run their car for like ever in the morning. So if you hear like a da -da 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 sound, that's my neighbor. <laughs> Lulu. Como la llamaban sus seras queridos, aprendió de muy poco que solo podía visitar las casas de amigos donde pudiera entrar por la puerta o comer en los pocos restaurantes y cafeterías que tuviesen suficiente para espacio para su hermoso cuerpo. Oh, Luisa's nickname is Lulu. Okay. I'm like, why are they suddenly talking about Lulu? And I get it now. But, uh. She's learned. That she could only visit uh, certain houses where she's big enough of her friends, where she's big enough to fit through the door. Or eat in certain restaurants or, cafe or cafeterias that have space for uh, her beautiful body. I'm glad they call it that. Y ni hablamos de transporte público. And look, oh, and let us not talk about public transportation. Okay. <laughs> uh, Luisa tiene una personalidad fabulosa, brillante y alegre. Pero no tener la capacidad de disfrutar tantos lugares y ocasiones la pone muy triste. Aww. She has a wonderful personality, uh, brilliant and happy, but she doesn't have the ability to enjoy places or... There are many places where she's not able to enjoy. Aww. Por eso ahora Luisa trabaja como... Arquitecta de 
urinsimo y forma parte de un grupo de animales que trabaja todo día a día para cambiar y mejorar la calidad de vida de los grandes animales en las ciudades de todo el mundo. Oh, so she's not an architect to make this a, a problem that she doesn't have to worry about. Um, wait, I'm now noticing like that. Okay, I'm noticing these like half circles that show up and it looks like they're just decorations. Okay. Anyway, this is Luisa or Lulu. Those ears are adorable and I'm guessing the author is like going off the fact that elephants are so big because when I look at this picture, the elephant is the same size as a lot of the other thing, as a lot of the other ones in the book. So in like the universe of the book, it doesn't seem that big. Um, I mean, those are impressive pants that Louisa is wearing. Um, I don't know how I feel about that story. Uh, Okay. But it is like a nice pattern. Let's see here. Ooh. Anderson Folka. He looks like a seal. <laughs> So Anderson nació cerca de la península de Valdes en la Patagonia Argentina, pero ahora pasa la mayor parte del año en el barrio de los Iclerus, cerca de Ushuaia, también en Argentina. A veces suena con el clima más Calido de sus playas natales, pero no extraña a sus ruidosos parentes cotillando y preguntando mil cosas al mismo tiempo. So he was born near the Valdez Peninsula in Patagonia, but now he spends a large part of the year in another part of Argentina. The Les Eclores. Um, sometimes he dreams of a client with natural beasts, but he's not strange, but it's no stranger to the noisy relatives that ask a million things at the same time. I'm missing something from that sentence. No lo malinterpreten ama su par lanchina familia para preferir disfrutar de su compañía solo una vez al año oh we got an introvert here <laughs> he loves his family but sometimes he loves his own company every like once a year Anderson pasa el tiempo Colecciono películas de gente cinco milímetros y haciendo sus mundialmente carlondonados quesos. He passes his time collecting 35 millimeter film and making his uh there are two descriptions but i recognize the last word is cheese <laughs> so basically he collects film and makes cheese <laughs> de hecho se ha convertido de un fabricante de quesos tan famoso de cada vez son las más personas que quieren ir a su casa a conocerlo 
it's Jesus had become very famous and people want to travel to his house to meet him. Por suerte, trasladar la producción de quesos al continente ha resuelto ese problema. Ahora puede disfrutar tranquilo de su paraíso en el faro del fin del mundo. Oh, he's so famous, but he's an introvert, so he has to... Uh, enjoy his paradise, his alone time in a part of the world that is not so nice. Okay, I mean, what's nice about this design and about several of the other designs in this book is that a lot of times people just go like, oh, let's make something that sits up regardless of whether the animal actually does this or not. But this goes like, no, the seal has this particular body and uh, they make the seal like that. Okay. So now I got James Pottle. Which, again, there are Spanish forms of the name James. Why not just use those? Okay. So James tiene una encantadora tienda estilo isbelino de antigüedades in Rye, Sussex. Oh, because James is English. Okay. <laughs> todos, los, todos los sábados se levanta temprano en su tetera roja favorita, por supuesto como buen pro, pr, prietario de una tienda de antigüedades, James tiene una gran colección de teterías y se prepara una buena taza de té mientras hace, no, mientras decide a qué feria de antigüedades le gusta ir, le gustaría ir. Oh, that is not where I thought that was going. Right. Hmm. Con su tomo leno de su delicioso té y una canasta repleta de sandwiches de pepino y una minuciosamente curada sección de quesos. James is buenvenido y muy querido en todas las ferias que visita. Again, not where I thought that was going. Siempre prepara unos sandwiches especiales de queso, comite para su amigo de toda la vida, Sebastián Bion, para disfrutar mientras van a la casa de antigües juntos. No lo suele decir en voz alta, pero James adora los sábados. So James lives for the weekends. Um, he loves antique stores. He's a store. It sounds like he owns an antique store himself. But on Saturday, he goes to travel to other antique stores. And he's welcome and every, everyone loves to see him because he goes, like he drinks a cup of tea, decides where he wants to go. After the cup of tea, he brings more tea and a bunch of sandwiches, a bunch of pepper sandwiches and a selection of cheeses for the other owners. And he often goes, um, he, he prepares a special type of sandwich for his uh, best friend, Sebastian Leon, while they enjoy a store together, like an like a, uh, antique house together. And James loves Saturdays. Okay. I mean... I'm guessing Teteria is beret because James is wearing a beret. 
I'm guessing pato is a type of bird? Don't know what type of bird. There are too many types of birds to keep track of them all. <laughs> uh, my guess would be duck. <laughs> that would be my guess. Um, from the color choice and the flippers. I don't really understand that story. But it sounds like James has a good time. Ah. Now we have Philip Langosta. I'm going to guess Langosta is a lobster because that is what it looks like I'm seeing. I thought it was some sort of crab. But the fact that it's langosta starts with an L makes me think lobster because there's a, some similarities between Spanish and English that way. So, Philip nació en la costa de Picardy, aunque nació sin sus antenas maores. Toda su familia lo ayudó a superar este pequeño desventaja ensinándole a usar sus pinzas delicamente. So Philip was born on Picardy Coast. I'm guessing that's somewhere in France. And he was born without the main antennas, it looks like. So his family helps him with this small um, disadvantage by teaching him to use his claws lightly. What is he missing? <laughs> I, he has all the, I guess it's like the, I guess antennas is a cognate here. Um, Philip acquirió tal habilidad que todo el hueso lo lamara cada vez que necesitaba cortar o arreglar algo con destreza. Uh, so they call him when he, when they need to cut something carefully. I think. Así, al poco tiempo se encontró con los que más les gustaba hacer cortateles y patronas para hacer ropa. Un día decidió que ya era hora de compartir su arte con el mundo y todas sus felicidades a cuestas se visitó con su creación preferida, su primer arraiz inspirada en la costa que lo vio crecer y subió a un tren rumbo a París. So he makes rope. Or no, he makes clothes. He makes clothes. Ropa is clothing. One day he decided to share his art with the world, so he went where artists go. Understandably, Paris. <laughs> um, comenzó Vendiendo sus prendas a vecinos y conocidos y pronto todos levaban sus remeras a rayas azules. So after a while, everyone wears his clothes. Okay. Like he's been selling his projects. Y así Philip Langose se convirtió en el sastre más famoso de todos los tiempos. El evento de la... Marinere? That last word is not a Spanish word. Because um, in Spanish, they have accents, but all the accents go the same direction. You start with it low and you go high. But in like French, you sometimes have the accent going the other way. And I think this is a French word that is transplanted into the text. And since I don't know French, I don't really know what that means. Like, I think that's the spelling for like marinara sauce. So I've got the feeling I've just come across a joke <laughs> uh, that I don't understand. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the lobster, which I guess if he's gonna be French, that piece of clothing makes sense. Because off, I, I don't know why we associate France with like striped clothing, but we do. 
That's like a boating shirt. That seems like a bit flatter compared to a lot of the other uh, projects that um, this uh, author has made. So now we have Lupita Monia Aranya. So this is a uh, Lupita the Spider Monkey. This is la primera vez que escucho Space Oddity. Lupita subió, uh, not subió, uh, Lupita supo que iba a dedicar toda su vida a dos cosas. Ir al espacio y viaje donde nadie había ido jamás. Y aprender a bailar con sus pantines. Lupita sabe que sus sueños no son fáciles de alcanzar, pero eso de pasa casi todo su tiempo estudiando. Y cuando ya no puede leer ni un palabra ni resolver un fórmula más, se casa sus pantines, pone a reproducir su lista de ocasiones con toda la discografía de David Bowie y sale a practicar. Estudia va a viajar al espacio es todo un desafío, pero bailar con sus patines mientras viste un mameluco de lentejulas sin agonizar de una de las cosas más difíciles que a cualquier se le puede ocurrir. So if I'm understanding this right, from the first time she heard Space Idea, uh, Lupita knows that she wanted to dedicate her life to two very different goals. Um, she wanted to go to space and see what no one had seen before. And she also wanted to learn how to dance with whatever patinese is. She knows her dreams aren't easy to achieve, so she's forever studying in school. And uh, when she can no longer read another book, or make another equation. She dances to a uh, bunch of songs from David Bowie's uh, discography. So those dreams, those two dreams are uh, very different, but they satisfy very different urges in her, I'm guessing, if I'm understanding that last sentence correctly. Anyway, this is Lupita. We love an ambitious person here. <laughs> um, it kind of reminds me of uh, when I started going to college a second time, I actually had to like take a, um, I actually had to take like these general education courses and I was able to satisfy one of them with a dance class. So it made me realize that um, if I had at least like one class a semester that wasn't focused like solely on books that had like a more physical aspect, then I wasn't so book drained by the end. I, I still got book drained, but I wasn't entirely book drained. And eventually I ended up graduating with a minor in studio art as a result of this, simply because uh, you can get a minor in studio art without having to submit a portfolio anywhere. You can just like learn classes and get started that way. Um, but it was like a nice, it was a nice way to, uh, what's it called? It was like a nice way to explore another part of my body other than the one that was being developed all the time. Because by the time I was in college, it was like, I felt like a walking brain. <laughs> it didn't feel like the rest of my body really had a purpose. <laughs> it's nice to have like other activities that force 
other parts of the body to be involved. <laughs> Oh, it's a jumpsuit. Lupita is wearing a jumpsuit. That is adorable. Okay. I mean, I'm not crazy about monkeys, but I might do it for that jumpsuit alone. <laughs> okay. So, Monte Temendua looks like an anteater. <laughs> um, I guess you have to have the tail because otherwise that nose isn't is going to make it too top heavy so Monty es un jardinero que tiene la suerte de vivir en un pasaje increíble el ballet de Lunarejo en Uruguay su casa está en la Cima de un cuebracho, su arbol favorito, donde le gusta pasar la mayor parte del tiempo tomando mate y comiendo churros con miel. Solo un poquito porque no quiere abusar de la generosidad de sus amigas las abejas. Oh. Ok. <laughs> Todos los días antes de atardecer, guarda su bolsa algunas frutas bien maduras y su, un cuaderno y sale a hacer su recorrido diario por el ballet. Okay, so so far, Amanti's a gardener who lives in the, uh, val the Luna Rejo Valley in Uruguay. Uh, his house is on inside his favorite tree, but he spends a lot of his time drinking whatever mate is and eating churros with honey, but only a little bit of honey because he doesn't want to abuse the generosity of his friends the bees. <coughs> <coughs> so, todos los días antes de acordecer, guarda su bolsa Poso algunos frutos bien maduras y un cuaderno y sale a hacer su recorrido diario por la valle. So before he does something, I, I don't know what Atar de Ser does, but before he does that, he um, gets like his mature fruits and a notebook and he writes in his uh, journal about the valley. Monty tiene la tarea de Verificar la salud de todos los árboles y asegurarse de que los insectos que haciendo lo que tenían que hacer y no comen de más. Oh, so he's um, checking to make sure that all the fruit is good for the tree. Like the trees are all healthy and that the insects don't eat too much of the fruit and they have enough fruit to eat, do what they need. Monty prefiere estar solo, pero una vez al mes se reúnen con René y Acare y Marcos Cuate para encambiar datos sobre las reuniones que las se trabajan y discutir sobre el libro que están escribiendo juntos. So they're writing a book together. He's writing a book with his uh, friends uh, René y Marcos. But, um... He only meets with them once a month. The rest of the time, he prefers to be alone. Okay. That, that, that's, uh, what's his name again? Monty. Monty, which... I guess it's a good choice the author chose variegated yarn because I could see that being a very boring pattern otherwise. Ah, Javier Cabra, we have ourselves a goat. <laughs> that looks like a goat. So Javier vive y trabaja junto a su familia en los 
o viares de una pequeña ciudad de sur de España. Producen el mejor aceite de oliva de la región y está súper orgulloso de formar parte de este logro. Pero de I'm starting to speak too fast again. Ugh. Pero también tiene su propio sueño horticola. La última vez que visitó a su tía Marcia Alpaca se enamoró de la agricultura peruana y de sus cientos de variedades de una misma hortaliza. Así que con la ayuda de las semillas de que Marcia le regaló, Avi ha comenzado a cobitar todo tipo de anquisimas variedades de maíz, papas y tomates. Su sueño es cobitar toda la variedad que alguna vez existió en América del Sur, recuperar esos sabores originales y tratar a la tierra con esa amabilidad y respeto ancestral. Mientras espera que crezcan los primeros cultivos, pasa horas y horas teniendo y hace pensar en comenzar a tener y hablar sus propios hilos. Ah, ok. So Javier works in an olive, um, works like in an What do you call a place in English where you store the olives? Is it like an olive field? Yeah, olive field. There you go. He works in an olive field with his family in a little city in the south of Spain. They produce the best olive in the region. He's very proud of that, but he's also very interested in products like in like stuff that can get grown in South America. So his aunt um, has given him seeds. So he's made like corn and potatoes and tomatoes. And he wants to uh, produce, like, a lot of the plants, like, create, like, a little South America in Spain in order to kind of, like, respect. It sounds like his family, like, came from the Americas over to Spain from the way this is. And he also spends many hours knitting and he makes his own yarns. <laughs> or, like, sewing. The uh, Spanish word for like knitting and sewing and crochet all seem to be the same. So who knows what it likes, but this guy is super cute. Oh my gosh, I think this might be the winner. We'll have to see. I remember like when I was younger, um, like my aunt and uncle used to raise goats for the Heifer Project. So I got to like milk goats at one point. Uh, they stopped that shortly before they adopted my cousin. But uh, then it's also like being raised Christian, you get all these things like sheep are good and goats are bad for whatever reason. And then you get a degree in art history like I did and find out that in archaeology, they can't tell the difference between the two of them years back. They're all like sheep goat because they are literally the same animal. They just have different hair. <laughs> like really different hair. <laughs> anyway, goats are misunderstood. Goats are awesome. <laughs> and that was my little rant for the day. <laughs> So this is Nira Tigressa. I'm guessing it's a tiger, despite the fact that she's pink. So, Nira siempre se ha presentado como un crafter. I mean, yeah, she's wearing a scarf. Total telltale sign. <laughs> Tejer a dos aguajas al coche. Hacer tapices, macrame, cualquier sea la técnica de tejido había y por haber, ella, ella las domina todas. 
So basically knitting, crochet, tapest making tapestries, I'm guessing, macrame, whatever type of like yarn work you can think of, she's done it. <laughs> Arimas, which is why she's wearing a scarf here. <laughs> Arimas, tiene su un segundo trabajo. Es diseñadora de un laboratorio de tecnología experimental donde aplica todos sus conocimientos sobre tejidos para crear materiales estabilizantes y reciclables que pueden usar en diversas áreas de la ciencia y la construcción. Oh! She has a second job. Um... So I'm guessing crafter is her first job, but her second job is she's a designer in a technology, an experimental technological lab where they test different fibers in order to be more environmentally sustainable and recyclable for science and construction, which pretty cool. Pero Nia no suele hablar mucho de su trabajo porque siente que la mayoría de las personas se aburren tanto antes tantos tecnic tecnicismo. How do I tecnicismos? Okay. O simplemente piensan que está hackando de su trabajo importante. Así que preferiría pasar de esa perisipiva, sentar tranquila en el rincón de algún café y tejer bufandas mientras se imagina cómo resolver su próximo despaciado textil. Well, she doesn't talk about her work because most people find it boring. Oh, or too technical. Oh. There's another aside I don't really understand, but it's like, is her her important job? Which, no, Nira, you, you brag about that. You brag about that, Nira. But then she often just spends time sitting in a cafe and knitting her scarf and thinking about what to do next. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, now we get to meet Sebastian Leon, who is a friend of somebody else here. <laughs> I forget who at this point. But uh, clearly, Leon is lion. So, Sebastian Leon. That's a good lion name. Guanista y Titeritero. Bastian supo exactamente. Lo que quería ser desde el día que vio por primera vez The Dark Crystal. No podía creer lo que vi en sus ojos. Todo el trabajo de hechas de esquina todos los meses, incluso años. Necesarios para crear este fantástico mundo animado solo usando muecos y cuerdas. Y muchos otros mecanismos super complejos, pero eso es algo que aprendería más tarde. Oh, now it says, okay. <laughs> este día comenzó a construir su primer techo. Afortunadamente, su amigo James Pato, que acaba de empezar a colección en titulares, Le dio a Bastión todos los materiales necesarios para armar los escenarios y la utilería. Con el tiempo, logró armar un, una pequeña compañía de terrores y después de haber trabajado de, en fieras películas y si, series animadas, ahora se centra cada día en sus habilidades como escritor para aventurarse como Guanista de su propia película. Okay. So basically, he figured Sebastian, which Bastian for short, 
uh, figured out what he wanted to do when he watched The Dark Crystal, which is a movie by Jim Henson. Uh, basically, I, I mean, I love the work of Jim Henson. The Dark Crystal is not my favorite, but I can see how other people would enjoy it. <laughs> um, Jim Henson's very good at world building, not the best at storytelling. It was basically these people go on like their old Lord of the Rings hunt to kind of free the land from these terrible creatures which eventually make a appearance in Farscape in the episode where everyone keeps switching bodies. <laughs> but um I mean basic to uh, come back from that tangent, um Sebastian saw this and was amazed at the amount of work a ghost in making movies, so he spends a, a lot of time learning about it. Which, I mean, I spent my own Muppet phase learning about how all it works, so I totally get that. Um, he wants to construct the his first theater. Fortunately, his friend, the James Pato, the bird from earlier, uh, provided him with a lot of the scenery and like uh the outfits I think like a lot of the scenery and the uh, props so while he's also filmed a couple like he's been in several movies and uh whatever animators are I think they're like voiceovers now he spends a lot of his time writing the film for his first movie It seems like he has a thumb. That's a nice little detail. Could I just say that all these, like, I don't typically make clothes for the stuffed animals that I make, but a lot of these clothes that this author has made for the stuffed animal is just freaking adorable, man. <laughs> oh. That that's, I just got a picture of how they make the tie, uh, how they're making Sebastian's nose. I I wasn't expecting it to look so dick like, but okay. <laughs> I was just thinking, oh no, you just add stitches. No no no, they they literally make a whole another tube and then they sew the tube on top of the other tube. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. I guess that's how you know he's in charge of the pride, huh? <laughs> We have a little fox here, Tomas Aguara, Aguara, Guazu, Guazu. It's strange here. It calls it Tomas, but then down below they change the uh, spelling to Toma. Like they change the spelling of Tomas. So on top, it looks like the English version with this, an accent over the A, but down below, it's actually spelled the Spanish way. So Tomás nació en algún lugar entre Argentina, Paraguay y Brasil. No sabe exactamente dónde y la verdad es que tampoco le interesa. Tomás cree con mucha firmeza que las fronteras son un tanto ridículas y que ya deberíamos hacer dejado que usar este concepto hace mucho tiempo. Okay. So, uh, Tomas was born somewhere between Argentina, Paraguay, and Brazil. He doesn't know and he doesn't care. He thinks the idea of borders should have been discarded a long time ago. <laughs> Y justo por eso investiga toda la vida y interacciones que existen en las regiones fronterizas. Se toma su trabajo en muy serio, pero eso no significa que no sea un tipo de partido. Okay. He lives his life in all sorts of different regions. And he uh, takes his work seriously. 
but that doesn't mean he enjoys some fun. That doesn't mean he doesn't enjoy fun. Uh, Thomas, a Thomas le encanta participar de una buena fiesta y no pierde la oportunidad de usar su magnífico mono. No, monio. There you go. There's a tilde over that end. Regalo de su querido amigo Daniel Jack Russell. También tiene previsto viajar a las Islas Galápagos, donde se encontrará con Newton Lechuza y Darwin Tartuga para comenzar su, un documento sobre los profundos vínculos que unen todas las cosas en este mundo. So he enjoys a good party and he doesn't lose the opportunity to use um, his magnificent whatever monio is. I guess it's mine? Or no. No. Um, it says gift from his uh, dear friend Daniel Jack Russell. Oh, is that his bow tie? Is monio bow tie? Because this box has a bow tie. Um, Tim, and also, he likes to visit the Galapagos Islands. So that connects with Newton Lechuza and Darwin Tortuga. Okay, I mean, at the fox. You know, I've got, I know I've got the yarn for the fox, but the last time I attempted the fox, I got bored. And I currently have a fox head with no body. <laughs> so I'm not sure if me starting another fox is the best idea, you know. <laughs> it was, but they'll never say never. So, Ada Corridita. This looks like a rabbit. If you ever get the chance to hold a rabbit, please take it. Not like a wild rabbit, obviously, but like a more domesticated one. Because their fur is so soft. <sighs> so soft. I love their fur. Oh my gosh. So, Ada se creo con su abuelo italiana, una amante de la opera. Really? <laughs> When I think opera, I don't think rabbits. <laughs> Aunque Ada no entendía como alguien puede ser fanático de una persona que cantará tan alto, se terminó enamorando de la música y la opera cuando su abuelo le mostró los dibujos animados que solía ver de su infancia. Sinfonias tontas. Y bueno, el resto es historia. Ahora no solo se ha confrontado en la cordero directora de orquesta más joven del mundo, oh. sino que también es una soprano um, asombrosamente taliosa que ha Resado en todas las salas de concierto con su energía y pasión. A menos una vez al año, viaja a Italia para disfrutar de su actividad favorita en todo el mundo, sentarse y ver de bojutitos animados mientras saboría un aperitivo con su abuela. So, uh, she lived with her Italian grandmother who tried to instill with her love of the opera and she can sing rather well but opera is not her first love she ended up becoming a uh, orchestra conductor the youngest rabbit orchestra conductor in the world and she really conducts the uh, concerts with a lot of energy and passion but every so often she'll return to Italy to um, sit and watch little animations while having an aperitivo with her grandmother. So I mean that this is Ada. 
Compared to a couple of the other patterns, this one seems to get a bit um, bland. Probably also because she made it with white yarn, and I find white yarn to be a bit bland. Not that I had to make this with white yarn. Most of the rabbits in my backyard are brown. Ooh, Elena Sarah. This is a deer. This is a deer. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's like freaking adorable, right? <laughs> so Elena trabaja como freelance en tecnología de la información para Near Tigresa. Programa todos los sistemas que ayuden a su amiga y crear sus ingeniosos tedidos. Oh, she also works at the Technological Institute. Um make like she takes care of all the technology that allows the uh, tiger that we saw to make her yarn. Cuando no está trabajando en su laboratorio, crea el programa videojuegos, su federera pasión. Her passion is actually making video games. Elena adora los videojuegos porque le permiten que ser quien ella quiera dejando un poco de lado esa idea de la dulce y adorable cerberito que todos esperan que sea. Muchas veces el trabajo en el laboratorio suele ser muy agotador y estresante, así que para recuperarse después de tanta exigencia, se permite tomarse una paz de meses para descansar y seguir trabajando de un nuevo videojuego Super emocionante junto a su amigo Newton Luchusa y su alma gemela Audrey Gacela. So Newton Luchusa really gets around. <laughs> She's like friends with everybody. She knows what's up. Um, so she adores video games because they allow her to be who she wants to be, which apparently... Is like the best deer in the world, I'm guessing. Or I I'm missing I'm missing something from that sentence. Many time many times the work in the laboratory is like very stressful. So sometimes she takes month long vacations to develop new video games. And she's working on a very super emotional new video game with her friend Newton Lechuza and I'm not sure what Alma Gamela is but again it's another name I feel like we're going to find out later on although there's not too many left hmm. oh that was the last one all right so now I gotta choose and I think I know what I want <laughs> I think I know which one I want. Um, I have to admit, Agatha was a close second. Very close second. But I think the one I want to make is Javier Cabra. I'm going to attempt to make that goat. Um, there's a lot that could go wrong. <laughs> um... But I think the next time that I'm going to film this, um, I'm going to be focusing on this pattern and I'm going to be breaking down the bits that I need to make and try to figure out what it is exactly that I need to do. But yeah, we we got a choice. Uh, I'm going to have a little goat as a buddy. So excited. That was today's entertainment. Have a nice day.